we can also do this using another approach. In the earlier example, we did it using a right join and we were forced to use a right join in this case because of the order in which the joins occur. If we used a left join, we saw why we don't get the results. Now suppose you say, well, can it not be done at all using a right join? It can actually be done using a right join, but all you have to do is to make sure that joining of sections and courses happens first. Right. So either you can control that by just ordering it properly so that that join naturally happens first or you could use parentheses to force that join to happen first. That's what this is showing you. So first join sections and courses, then join instructors and get all our nulls. OK, how do you make sure that the instructor gets instructors table gets joined to the result of sections and courses? You can do that using parentheses as shown here. That is, we are saying here slightly different syntax from than before. Oh, it's got cut off here. Okay, so look at this here. Select course name, section name, first name, last name. We have instructor's I, left join. But this time, we put a parenthesis around the join of courses and sections. Right, so we are not just saying instructor's I, left join courses or left join sections. No, instructor's I, left join to the result of the join of sections and courses. That's what this parenthesis forces. OK, so then what happens is that this join occurs first to the result of this join. We join instructors with the instructor ID matching. So once again, what we have done is this. The net effect is just like we did a right join earlier. The net effect is that we forced this join to occur. The sections to courses join to occur first. Then we join instructors to that. So then the effect of the outer join was still preserved. Okay, so we can achieve this using a left join or a right join. But uh, if you do a right join, then you find that sections and courses naturally got joined first. But if you want to do a less join, uh, left join, then we have to use parentheses to force that sections course join to occur first before we have the instructor join. Okay, now your turn. List the team names and the average maximum and minimum weight of each player of players in each team list in ascending order of team names around the averages to two decimal places okay so once again before you start getting all confused just look at the query and see what it's asking for look at the pattern of what it's asking for visualize the output not with the actual details but the structure of the output okay we're saying give us the team names and for every team Give me the average maximum and minimum weight and of course ordering and stuff like that. So once again, pause the video, get your answer, try it out, then come back and continue. I'm sure you got this as your query. Select team name and then uh, round the average weight of two, uh, average weight, maximum weight, minimum weight. In fact, I should have rounded all of them. I have rounded only the average weight. OK, but I should have said round minimum weight comma two round maximum weight comma two. I should have rounded these two as well. My mistake. Uh, maybe I should do it right away.
Okay, so we've rounded all the averages to two decimal places. From teams T, now we want the team names and for every player. And we know that the players table has a field called team ID. So that is the field on which we're going to do join, right? So you see here in the players table, there's a field called team ID. And of course the teams table has a field called team ID. And we are trying to join the two things. So we are saying from teams T, join players P on P dot team ID equals T dot team ID. But this time we want the averaging for every team. So we are saying group by team name. And then of course we want the results also ordered by team name. So ordered by team name. I, I need to put ascending because that is the default, but I've just included it. Okay, so I'm pretty quite sure you got this. Okay, for each game, list the IDs of the teams and the venue. Again, look at it. Uh, and the venue name, presumably. That, I think that's what I meant. So let's treat it that way. List For each game, list the IDs of the teams and the venue. So which tables are required? Well, we, we need the venue name, so venue table is required. And we need the games table because for each game we are talking about, right? So clearly, this query requires us to join those two. Once again, I would say just pause, pause the video, try it out, get your answer, be ready with the correct answer, and then come back and watch the video. Okay, so uh, we've got, of course, we want the team IDs. So first team ID, second team ID, that those are the field names in the table. First team ID, second team ID, right here you see that. And we want the venue name. And of course, you get the venue name by joining the games table with the venues table. So from games G, join venues V on G dot venue ID equals V dot venue ID. Because the games table has field called venue ID. And of course, the venues table also has its key as venue ID. So therefore, that's going to be what will give us the result. Fairly straightforward. This is very similar to what we had done several times in the last week. So there's nothing big about this. Of course, if you want all the venues information, even if no games have been played on a venue, you could use an outer join, a left join or right join, depending on the order in which you want to put the results. I have not asked for that, so that was not needed in this particular example. Okay, let's take a look at this. This is a slightly tricky one. You must pay very careful attention to this query. It says for each game, list the game ID and the names of the participating teams. Okay, let's go back to the team uh, games table. It says game ID, first team ID, second team ID the two teams which are playing in the game. So the IDs are here. But what the query is asking for is for every game, don't give me the IDs, but give me the names of the corresponding teams. Okay. Now, one thing you can, of course, figure out is, well, obviously, we're going to get the key team names by joining the games table to the teams table. Okay. That's fine. But there's a twist because you have to join the games table to the teams table to get the first team ID, but you also have to join it to get the second team ID, right? So which field do you join on? Do you join first team ID equals uh, team ID or do you join second team ID equals team ID? You can only do one of them. You can't do both of them, right? So that is where the problem comes with this particular query. Because all the time we've been saying, oh, I've got the venue ID, I've got the venue ID, I'm doing a join. That's because fortunately in the games table and the venues table, there's only one venue ID, so everything is great. But here we've got two team IDs. We've got the first team ID and the second team ID. So when you join it with the teams table, do you match the first team ID or the second team ID? If you match only the first team ID, then you can only get the name of the first team. If you match the second team ID, you can only get the name of the second team. But we want both. That's the trick. Okay, so we've got the games table. But like I said earlier, we're going to join it to the teams table. But because of the fact that there are two team IDs in the games table, 
we actually have to join the teams table twice to the games table. Once we join it on the first team ID. So that's a join to get the name of the first team. You actually have to perform another join with the same teams table to get the second team's name. Okay, so this is a very peculiar kind of a situation where we have to join the same teams table twice to the games table because the games table has two team ID fields to represent the two teams that played against each other. Okay, this is a very peculiar and uh, uh, convoluted or different sort of a query from what we have seen so far. This is very important for you to observe this. Okay, so the same table is joined more than once in the same query. It's somewhat of a rarity that it happens. Okay, so let's take a look at how this is accomplished using uh, SQL. But first, of course, we are seeing how the result is going to look like. We've joined the first, this join has been accomplished on the first team ID. And this join has been accomplished on the second team ID. Once we have done that, we want to take the game ID, first team name, second team name. This is what we are looking for. Once you have performed the join as shown on top, then we want the result to be like this, to, to pull out the appropriate columns from the result. Okay. So how do you achieve this in SQL? How do you join the same table twice? Think about it a little bit, how you might do it. I would suggest strongly that you pause the video and even try to write it out and see what happens when you try to join it twice. You might actually find the solution. In fact, I'd be very happy and proud if you find the solution by yourself before you look at what I have to say. Now, don't feel too bad if you're not able to find the solution. But I think if you start writing it out, you might actually see the solution for yourself and that'll be great. Okay, are you ready to watch it now? Let's see. Does this give you a hint as to what to do? You're going to join the same table, the team's table twice, but each time you're going to give it a different alias. Once you're going to call it T1, once you're going to call it T2. Okay, so look at what's going on here. You're saying join, forget the select clause for now. We'll come to that at the end. Think from games G, join teams T1 on G dot first team ID equals T1 dot team ID. So this is the first join to get the first team's name. So we're taking the first team ID, joining it with the team ID of T1. Okay, so that's the first join. Then we get the second join. So we're going to have another one, join teams two on G dot second team ID equals T2 dot team ID. Okay, so we are joining this table teams table twice. But interestingly, we are giving each join each time we're joining it, we're joining it with a different alias name so that we are able to refer to the field names properly. Okay, so once you have achieved this, it's easy for us to say, uh, you know, g.gameid, t1.teamname, t2.teamname. Okay, this is a very instructive and very interesting kind of a scenario where the same table has to be joined multiple times. Admittedly, this is somewhat of a rare occurrence it doesn't happen too often in business situations but it actually does does happen so it's better for you to understand this kind of a scenario now incidentally if you're wondering uh, you know we're all the time talking about basketball and university and so on are we ever really going to do something about businesses yes we will in fact for the exam the databases that i'm going to give you are complete business scenarios where we are talking about, you know, there are two different scenarios that I'll be giving you. In fact, what I will do is to give you the database well in advance, because these are fairly large databases that you're going to look at, lots and lots of tables. Uh, so I'll give you the database well in advance, give you a description of every table and so on. So you can familiarize yourself with the database and the tables. And then later on, you'll start worrying about the queries. 
So the exam, uh, at exam time, I will only reveal the queries. I don't have to really reveal the uh, anything further. Databases, I'm going to give you in advance. Okay, so that's how you do this particular query. It's very interesting kind of a query. Okay, this time we're going to look at another interesting sort of a query. I'm saying get a list of the captain's first name and last name in ascending order of last names along with the first and last name of the members of their teams. Okay, so we want captain name, player name, captain name, player name, captain name, player name. That's the result you're going to have. Or alternately, I could have said, give me the player name and the name of the captain of the player. It's just the sequencing issue, right? So here we're not doing any grouping because we're going to list for every player who the captain of that player is. Okay, so that's what we're going to do here. Now, think about which tables are involved. Clearly, player's table and the team's table because the player table contains which team the player belongs to the team table tells you who is the captain of the team. Okay, so this is an interesting scenario. You're going to join the player's table to the team's table on the team ID. And you're also going to join the team table to the player's table on the captain ID matching the player ID. Right, because after all the captain ID is nothing but the ID of the player who is the captain of this team. We could have called it player ID, but captain ID is actually a better name because it tells you more about what role that field is playing. Okay, so another example of the same table occurring more than once in a join. Okay, so we've got the player's table. We are joining it to the team's table to find which team a player belongs to. Okay, so that's this join. And then you also want to join it again to the player's table to find out who the captain of that team is. Right? I could have called it P1 and P2. I just happened to call it P and P1. Doesn't matter so long as they are different. Okay? So this is the scenario and we can now convert this easily into SQL. Select P dot player first name, P dot player last name. Okay, where P happens to be for the players. And then p1.player first name, that is for captains as captain first name, p1.player last name as captain last name. Okay, that is from here. And then the rest of it is fairly straightforward. Players join teams T and then join teams T join players P1 on the fields as given here. Okay, so that's a very interesting kind of a scenario. Now we come to something which is really, really interesting. We're saying for each game, again, this is talking about the SBA uh, database, the basketball database. I didn't mention that, so maybe I will. So we're saying for each game, list the names of the two teams that played. We know how to do this. We've already done this. But we're also saying, show me the name of the winning team. That is, we want to say game one, the teams that played are, uh, you know, X and Y and X won the game. Okay, we want to find the name of the winning team. Well, that's interesting because you can determine the name of the winning team only based upon the points that each team scored. Okay, so that's the interesting aspect here. So once again, the two teams, uh, the two tables that are involved are teams and games. We've seen this before, right? So the tables structure, the, set, the, the join structure is going to be exactly like what we had before. But the select is what is going to be different. Okay, so we're going to do this. We've got the teams. We're going to join, of course, we're going to join the games table twice with the teams table. Just like before. Okay, because the games table has a first team ID and a second team ID. So to get the first team name, we join it once. We get to get the second team name, we join it again. So that's all pretty straightforward. Okay, so 
that's fine select the once you've done this join you can select the names of the two participating teams but how do you select the name of the winning team that's what is the interesting and uh, fascinating aspect of this particular query okay because depending on the points code you have to select either the first team name or the second team name that's what is interesting okay so so this first one says uh, from games g join teams t1 on first team id this we've seen this before and then we see here this is the second join all of this we've already done to find the team names in the earlier query so this is straightforward once again so now we can start selecting so t1 dot team name t2 dot team name in fact, we could have said t1.team name as first team name, t2.team name as second team name, etc. That's fine. We can do that. But here we need to add something that says if the points of the first team are greater than show me the first team's name. If the points of the second team are greater than show me the second team's name. That's what we want put in here. Okay. So here depending on the points we want to put the first team or the second team that's really what we are looking for here and the way that is achieved is what is shown here for each so here we can see t1 dot team name as first team name as first team t2 dot team name as second team which is fine i just added the as portion now and here we are saying look at this whole expression it starts with the parentheses ends with the parentheses and it says case that is what is going to say depending on if the value is this then put this if the value is that if the condition is this then put this otherwise put that right so we are saying case when first team points greater than second team points then put the t1 dot team name right that is because the first team is the winning team so put its name otherwise put t2 dot team name end so that is the way the case situation occurs whenever you want to conditionally select something you use the case and you do it this way case when condition then action you could have many whens actually here we have just two but you could say when this put this when that then this when this then this you could have many many cases finally you have an else which says if none of those whens matches then put this value and finally you end the case with an end and it begins and ends with parentheses of course since this is a very complex expression it's a good idea to give it an, a name so i'm just calling it as winning team okay so this is very important to look at very interesting it shows you the serious power of sql okay now the very interesting point that i would like to emphasize and that i'll start emphasizing more and more as we look at database design is notice how we've got the database and then we are just thinking up all kinds of queries that we can make against the database and for any query we think of we are able to find a way to do it with sql fairly simply okay now remember these queries will work even if your database has millions and millions of rows in fact they'll work pretty quickly as well you won't it won't take too much time one second it may take and you'll get back the result right so uh, the uh, sql query that you're constructing is pretty small five lines six lines that's all you're writing and you can extract data from really complicated databases now the beauty is you'll see that shortly when we design the database we don't really think about what queries we might have to execute against it. We just say, let's understand the business rules and design the database. Once we have incorporated all the business rules into our database design, then you bring it on, bring on any query and, I, and you can construct it very easily using SQL. Okay, so we really don't think about queries at all when we are designing the database. We just design it saying, this is what the business is all about. That's all we do. We design the database and then we come back with a certain amount of confidence. Throw me any query and I can solve it using SQL. 
Okay, that's the real beauty about SQL. All that is happening because SQL is non-procedural and the very powerful kind of a language. And the underlying simple algebra of relational databases allows all this to be possible. It's very, very powerful and extremely, uh, I would say, exciting concept, which has driven the growth of computer-based applications for business. Okay, so that's it for this week, relatively short lecture, where I have not introduced new concepts, but I have shown you some uh, complicated queries and some extensions of, of what we have already learned in SQL. So what I suggest is before the exam, just go through all the SQLs we have done so far, including everything we have done in the lectures, as well as everything we have done uh, for assignments. I would say the more practice you get, uh, the stronger you will be in SQL. In fact, another good way for you to practice would be for you to look at the databases and construct your own queries. After all, uh, you know, these are business databases. You can, uh, databases, you understand each of the tables. You can say, well, I would like to find the answer to this question. And then you go and construct the query. In fact, uh, like I told you, for the exam, I'll give you the databases in advance so that you can try out all kinds of queries on the databases that you're going to face in the examination. Right? So you'll have a lot of material to practice with. And I would suggest strongly that you practice a lot with all of this. And of course, the exam is going to be open book, open notes. Okay, so it's not going to be anything for you to remember. So it's only practice that will uh, make it easy for you to tackle the questions in the exam.